So question 27, uh, we've got figure 27.1. It shows the IV characteristics of an LED designed to emit blue light. And the first part, A, is we've got to describe and justify the variation of resistance R of the LED as the potential difference V across the LED increases from. And we've got three different sections to go. So the first section is between minus 1 volts and 2.6 volts. So that's this region here. And what we can see is as V increases, no current flows. So the resistance is infinite. Right. Then 2.6 to 3 volts, so that's this curving section here on this part and what we should realize is now uh, the resistance here is uh, decreasing as the current is starting to flow And now the, the final section is this straight line. Now you've got to be very careful here because um, a, a very common mistake is people think, well, because we've got a straight line on a IV graph that the resistance isn't changing. That's only true if it's an ohmic resistor and it's going through zero, zero. Because you have to remember that the definition of resistance is V over I and it's just the simple ratio at any particular potential difference across the component to the current going through it. It's not to do with the rate of change. It's not to do with this gradient. And if we take some points on the line, so for example, let's take that point there, which is at 3.2 volts and 20 milliamps. So if I was to go 3.2 divided by 20 times 10 to the minus 3, I could see that my resistance there is 160 ohms. Whereas if I'd have taken the point, I don't know, let's take another point. I think that's probably an okay area. So when we're at three volts, we've got a current of, let's say, about eight milliamps. So if I went three divided by eight times 10 to the minus three, that would give me A resistance of 375 ohms. So in this region here, even though it's a straight line, but because it's not passing through the origin, we would have to say the resistance continues to decrease. Okay. Now if we move on to B, a student uses the LED with the characteristic shown in figure 27.1 to construct the circuit shown. Here we go, a suitable resistor R is used in the circuit. The cell has an EMF of 1.5 volts and negligible internal resistance. The LED fails to emit any light when the switch S is closed. Explain why the circuit does not work and modify the design of the circuit so that the LED is lit when uh, switch S is closed. Okay, the first thing to see is that 
the cell is um, arranged so that the positive is this side and that and of course current conventional current flows from the positive to the negative and as we can see the LED is a, is in what was uh, technically known as reverse biased so Now what I did think was very tight in the uh, mark scheme is how you alter the LED around didn't score you a mark but I'd still put it in. Um, so if you were to turn the LED around that would solve that problem although it didn't score a mark. Um, the second one is you may be asked, uh, the reason is you might be wondering why I've got the graph up here already is it tells us that the EMF of the cell is 1.5 volts. Well, if we were only at 1.5 volts, even if it was, wasn't reverse biased, then we're nowhere close to the uh, striking voltage of 2.6 volts. So um, the EMF is too low. And this is the one where you would be able to modify the circuit and score the mark um, and I would say if you were to add a second cell that would get the circuit to work as long as you've turned the uh, LED around the right way And the last part, uh, the wavelength of light from the LED is 480 nanometers. The radiant power emitted from the LED is 1.2 milliwatts. And we've got to calculate the number of photons N emitted from the LED per second. Well, the first thing we need to realize is that the power is the work done over the time. And because we're just doing this per second, I just need to know how much work uh, I'm doing in one second so I know that my energy is sorry my power is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 joules per second um, I'm going to need to know how much energy of, uh, the photons have got so if I take Planck's constant multiply it by the speed of light and divide it by the wavelength that will tell me the energy of the photon. So that's going to equal 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the 8 and divide that by 480 times 10 to the minus 9. That gives me the energy of the photon. And then if I work out what the power is divided by the energy of the photon that will tell me the number of photons per second. So 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 and that gives me an answer of 2.2 nine uh, photons per sec oh, sorry 2.9 bit of a power of 10 error times 10 to the 15 photons per second and that's the breadth of physics paper completed